OK, uh, so uh, this is going to be the order of things. We're going to do a talk, then we're going to discuss, and then I'm going to do a purely improvised five-minute lightning talk. Um, so hi, uh, my name's Ian Carroll. I'm a crafter at 8th Light. Um, and so I'm going to do a talk without any preparation at all. Uh, and this is called How to Improvise a Tech Talk and Why You Should. Uh, that's as far as I got with planning this. I did not make any slides. I did not rehearse it in any way. I have, however, had the benefit of thinking about it for a little while. And so in that sense, it's not as purely improvised as some might like. However, uh, I am going to do a purely improvised five minute lightning talk after this, where you're going to suggest to me one uh, a, a topic. And I'm going to give a tech talk on the topic that someone chose. Uh, just to prove that I don't necessarily need to have that. I don't need to have any planning at all, not even in my head. So, um, yeah, how to improvise a tech talk, why you should. Uh, I think I'm going to start with why you should improvise tech talks. Um, I remember a while ago, I came here and I said to somebody, like, hey, I'd like to do a tech talk. And they said, like, well, did you prepare? And I was like, well, no, I just had this idea. And they said, well, you shouldn't waste people's time. Uh, their time is really valuable, so you should actually prepare ahead of time. And granted, that makes sense, right? I mean, all of us make a pretty decent amount of money, and sitting here and listening to me is, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, those people aren't listening, so that's fine. They don't count them. So my salary times nine um, is how valuable this tech talk needs to be in order for it to actually um, not be wasting our time. Uh, and I understand why, you would th why, why that would intimidate people into thinking that they shouldn't improvise a tech talk or why they should totally and completely have it all ready to go before they start talking. Uh, and yeah, that's great. However, that's going to create a big barrier to you starting to create tech talks. Uh, and so if you want to talk at conferences or you want to share uh, something that you learned that week, you know, you don't have a month and a half to prepare for what you just discovered that week of like some realization of some sort that you had, uh, regardless of what it happens to be. Maybe it happens to be something about test-driven development. Maybe it happens to be something about uh, how you're refactoring your code or um, a client issue, like, uh, you know, some way in which you can present your ideas that, that worked out really well. Um, you lose the opportunity of sharing all that valuable knowledge when you don't improvise a tech talk. Um, so, let's talk about some basics about improv real quick, about why, uh, what to do, and how, how to go about improvising it. One is, whew, the first thing is to embrace failure, which includes how to write on a whiteboard. This is a basis for a lot of creative work. It's also the basis for experimentation. And this is how you find new things. Don't fear failure. Embrace it. Right now, I'm feeling a little bit nervous because I'm talking and I don't know what I'm going to say next. But I do know that if I embrace failure and I really just love that, then um, I, will, uh, I, I will communicate something and I'll learn something. So will everybody else. Uh, the next thing to do, so don't be afraid, to, don't let it be too precious is another way of putting that. Um, don't let your tech talk get so important that you're thinking about the fact that you need to present something that's going to be of value to you know, the 10 software developers or the 20, or you know, if you're at, at like one of the larger offices, um, you know, 60 plus people. Um, don't think about that. Instead, um, let's go into a little theater theory here. Uh, breathe. That's the next thing to do. It might seem simple, but when you take the time to actually breathe, you can, uh, you can do a lot. Um, by taking the time to actually breathe, by uh, slowing down when you're starting to feel a little bit nervous, uh, what you can do is reconnect with your ideas, 
Uh, it also allows you to, um, I mean, it's the basis for life, really. And it's easy to forget. Um, along with that, uh, I'm going to do this in three points, so 2A, B, and C. Did I mention I'm improvising this? Because, uh, yeah, uh, connect is the next thing to do. Uh, another reason to improvise your tech talks, now that I'm thinking about it, is that it allows you to focus on your speaking technique more than it does necessarily the content of your ideas. Your speaking technique is really important. And by handling situations where you don't know exactly what to say, you haven't rehearsed it, you're not reading from a script, uh, it allows you a chance to be a little bit more real with the people around you. And this is where connection comes in. So this comes from a theater teacher that I had back in college. Um, and he said there are three things that you need to do in order to be an actor on the stage. And this applies to being a speaker as well. The first thing is to breathe. Because if you don't breathe, then you can't speak. Um, you, you know, and one of the things that you do when you're afraid or you're nervous or you've got stage fright, which everybody does, including me, um, is you stop breathing. Because physiologically, when in a flight or fight uh, state, um, if there is a predator that is coming that, that could eat you, one of the first things you do is you stop moving and you also stop breathing because it might hear you, right? That still is happening right now. Right now, my body is still giving me all the biological signals that say um, there's a predator that's going to eat you. <laughs> that predator is the amorphous nine plus of you that are listening right now. Um, uh, at least that's what it's representing inside of my head because of the 100,000 to you know, uh, two and a half, three billion years of evolution um, and of all the ancestors I've had that have survived that have had that response. Um, so yeah. Uh, however, this is different from that. You guys aren't going to eat me. Um, in fact, I think you might even be rooting for me a little bit as I'm up here, just making this up on the spot. Um, so that's important to change that, reframe that. And the first thing to do is to breathe. Because that reminds you that you're actually still fine. Everything's fine. Connecting is the next thing that's really important. So making sure to have eye contact with the people who are listening. Making sure to check in, see how people are doing. Um, that's going to be really important for knowing when to move on to the next stage. Because I think it's about time that we talk about the next thing, which is to speak the truth. Now this might seem really simple, but you might notice when I started this talk that I said I, ha I started with a story, something that happened. And um, that's really important to start from where you know and what you know, and to be honest about what you're feeling and how you're feeling about uh, doing a talk. So all of this is practice. Um, and this is a great way to use an agile workflow in developing tech talks. You first start by improvising the whole talk right off the top of your head. See how it lands, see what works, whether the whole idea even works as a proof of concept. Then after that, you go back in, and if it turns out you really want to do that talk again, uh, and you want to you know, polish it up for a conference, let's say, then you start making your slides. Then you start um, rehearsing it. You start remembering the parts that really landed well. Uh, and in fact, that's another reason to record your talks as well, so that you can see that. By the way, that's terrifying. Watching yourself on tape. Um, I suppose it's called tape. It's not really tape anymore, but that's not the point. The point is that you're watching yourself, and you're also judging all of the nervous tics that you have, um, like this gesture that I keep doing, for example. That's one. Uh, there's a dozen others. Why am I holding my hand up like this right now? I don't know. Uh, that's a nervous tick, so I can let that go. So uh, this also gives me a chance to practice just speaking technique. Um, and when you speak the truth, you can actually just go straight from what you actually know, what you personally have experienced, uh, what's true about yourself, um, and share that experience with your audience, which, by the way, will have had similar experiences. Or if they haven't, you have forewarned them that they may have those experiences. So that's really cool. 
Um, so these are some basic things. After that, what else? Um, bringing back um, uh, earlier points uh, is another thing that you can do. Um, so yeah, I guess now we can get into some improv uh, technique here. Um, besides the simple thing of embracing failure, breathe, connect, speak the truth. Uh, let's talk about how. How do we do this? Uh, so yeah, you come from a point of view of how you feel about a thing. Uh, bringing it back, you know, you can bring back earlier points. So I'm going to bring that back now. When you do a tech talk, um, uh, or at least when I had somebody tell me, well, you shouldn't just improvise a tech talk. And the reason why you shouldn't is because of the fact that people's time is valuable. When you fail to do that, when you start from a place of thinking that you could fail, or that you don't have anything to say, or forgetting some basics like you need to connect to your audience, what you're doing is you're robbing everybody of your experience. You don't have to be perfect at a tech talk. Uh, and improv really celebrates that idea that it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, so yeah, in response to that, I understand where he was coming from when he told me that. Um, and I respect him very much. Um, but there's another point of view uh, that I have around this, which is that uh, you're never going to get anywhere if you don't try. If you never take the field, you're not going to. Uh, it doesn't matter, like, sure, you could have a perfect tech talk in your head. No one's ever going to see it. No one's ever going to know it. Uh, and you won't know what's valuable unless you go up and try. So don't worry about waste. Uh, what's that thing in code I remember? Uh, somebody once said to me uh, that the best kind of code, or like the enemy to writing good code, is early optimization. So when you start, instead of trying to get something off the ground and running first, you start by worrying about uh, performance. Um, you start worrying about all of these details. Don't worry about the details yet. Just get something dumb up and on its feet. And by doing it this way, by improvising your tech talks first, before you start planning out what they're going to be, or figuring out whether or not a conference would want this particular tech talk, if you just improvise a whole lot of them, and you just keep practicing that technique, then uh, you can find something much more efficiently without wasting a whole lot of time on your own uh, creating slides, writing down uh, memos for yourself about exactly what points you're going to say. Um, and then when you record it as well, you can review your technique afterwards. Uh, so that creates an iterative approach that's very much more in the agile mindset than having a big design upfront version of that, which would be to plan it all out ahead of time, script it all out, decide how you're going to do it, and then make sure that you're not going to fail. You're going to fail. Everybody fails at talking. Everybody fails at life. But the thing is that, <laughs> no, 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 I mean, seriously, you, you do. Um, this failure, we think of failure as a bad thing. It's not. It's not a bad thing at all. This is a very happy thing. We should enjoy this. You know, when you get up and you try something, you really, like, uh, I don't know, there's a joy about it. And there's, there, there is um, a, a great feeling of co conquering your fears when you decide that, it doesn't matter if you fail or not. How many people are actually going to watch this thing? I mean, I've got like nine people right here in front of me. How many of you are going to remember it in a week or two? You've got other things going on in your lives. This isn't all about me, even though I'm the one standing up here. You know? And that's another thing, is that you should actually, that's, that's a great point. Make it about them. Make it about your audience. It isn't about you. It isn't about you being a failure or not. Fine, failure, great. You can reframe that as something nice. But if you make it about the people that you're talking to, um, and you focus on sharing some care with the people that are around you, 
I think that's probably more valuable than whatever the content of the talk actually is. So I think I'm going to stop there, because that seems like a good point to stop at. Um, that's my tech talk on how to improvise tech talks and why you should. Uh, it was completely made up on the spot. Uh, and thank you. So next, uh, let's have a discussion, which is our next thing that we're going to do. Um, what do you guys think? Any thoughts? It was good. <laughs> Thanks. For being completely improvised and unplanned. Yeah. Hard to do. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, here's what I would recommend in that case um, that would not be too cost prohibitive as far as your time is concerned, because I know everybody here has a lot on their plates. You know, uh, you're working, you know, 40 hours a week. Uh, you don't really have very much time to do some, some notes or something like that, but you could put up a couple of slides that just have your big takeaways of something you learned that week. And then you could improvise a talk based off of the general concept of like, this is something I learned this week. And this is something I have to tell everybody else. You know, here's something I did at this client. This is what happened. That, here's something that I totally failed at this week, and I don't know what to do about it. But here it is. Um, yeah, uh, that's something you can do. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there is a middle ground to that. And in fact, this was kind of a middle ground to this, because I wasn't given something ahead of time. I had a little bit of time to sort of think about what I kind of wanted to say before I started speaking, which if you're doing a purely improv thing, you wouldn't have that opportunity. Uh, it should be something that's just given to you right off the top, and you just have to go. Uh, but yeah, but that's part of the game of it, and kind of why it's fun uh, is, yeah, you, <laughs> you're just making it up. Any other thoughts? Mm -hmm. Aren't they though? They, they are actually, they're, 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 they're kind of both. And in fact, I think a good tech talk should be entertainment. I agree, it should be entertaining. But it should also teach you something. I think maybe it's because of the fact that there's so much improv out there that um, they actually fail to do good improv by not having any actual takeaway for the improv. There's no message there. There's nothing that is transmitted, let's say. There's no... Um, it's all icing and no cake. Uh, and that's a frequent problem with a lot of comedy improv. And uh, improv doesn't have to be comedy. You can actually use it for tech talks. Um, I go to a place where we do um, improvise Jane Austen or improvise Charles Dickens. And sure, there are plenty of times where it's funny because we're making it up on the spot. But there's also something there. And there's something that we're trying to communicate with each other uh, while we're up there. Um, and I think that's really important too, is that like creativity isn't only for entertainment. It's also for utility. And I think mostly, it needs to stop. Um, mostly I think what it's for is sharing what it means to be human. Uh, and that's really important in our field as well. Because, um, I mean, we are that. But more than that, like how to be human in our circumstances. And who knows better than by sharing experiences of us trying to do that. Any other thoughts? Or? Yeah. Obviously, you need to deliver some information. But if you fail to connect to your audience, then I'm not sure how much it's going to matter. It's kind of a prerequisite. 
Um, you can kind of think of it this way, like there's a sort of a pyramid, right? It's like a Maslow's hierarchy of needs kind of a thing. If you don't feel that you're, like care is a matter of feeling safe and supported and like you matter, or that this talk has something to do with you. If I, um, that, that's, that's what I mean by like care. Care is about safety. No safety, you don't care what the other person is going to say. If you feel that the reason I am doing this talk is because of the fact that I just want to show off, then that goes away, so is this. You're not listening. It doesn't matter if I've got the most brilliant thing in the world to say. If you don't feel that this is about you or this is for you, then all of this high-level technical stuff that you might be talking about is not going to be important. It's not going to matter. You have to care about your audience. Um, but that just gets into a matter of what we call stage presence. or This is another one of those soft skills that uh, people just sort of lump together into a bucket and then sort of shove off into the corner and forget about. Uh, but it's really important that you have this here because that supports all of your other ideas. If you don't have care for your audience, if you don't actually, if you're not making it about them, then you might as well just go home. Uh, at least that's my philosophy around it. I mean, if you can think of a different way of approaching that where you don't have to, ign you can ignore your audience. To, is there a way in which we could do that in which we could just ignore the audience and just deliver information and say that's, a, that's valuable? I'm, I'm asking sincerely. I'm not asking as like a hypothetical. Could we even do that? I think you could, but it, like, it would be bad. Right. So, true. Granted, like, Disneyland is a really good example of that. I just went to Disneyland a, bit a, a little while ago. And at Disneyland, um, it's different from a lot of other theme parks that came before it. Uh, and it's still one of the best in the world because of the fact that they show care. You feel like, you, you're, you're, you feel like you, you're, you're being cared for when you're there. Granted, it's not perfect. There's plenty of times where you don't really feel cared for, but it's a lot different from what the previous mentality was, which was give them fun rides. Focus on, on this, but that's icing. This is cake. If you don't give them the cake, then it doesn't matter how good your icing is. And it should be mostly cake. You don't need to have a whole lot of really high level ideas just jammed in together and then delivered. Uh, no one's going to be able to digest all of that. They will digest one of these concepts plus a whole lot of this. So might as well just give it to them. Anyway, that's my thinking around it. Okay, <laughs> I guess we can move on to step three. <laughs>